seems almost impossible to do in a very short period of time. Hi, Paige and hi, Megan. Lovely to see you. So I'm hoping to get help you to know how to get information in your head and to keep it there. We are actually talking almost long term memory here. So we are we are thinking ahead to a level proper and also to how to start maximizing marks in exam questions. Hi, Tom. Hi, Saisha. I hope I've pronounced that right. I'm very sorry if I haven't. So first of all, I want to say thank you to Jade, um, as in unjaded Jade. Um, I was Jade's biology teacher um, and, and we've kept in contact, which is really lovely because she has been kind enough to share some materials with me that she's been given by Minerva University, which is where she's at over in the States. And they do all of their teaching based on the research that is has some of which has been done by one of the heads of Minerva, this guy here, as to how students learn and what works. And the really lovely thing, Oh, how to get out of a rut. Thank you, Tom. I will I will try and do that. Hi, Vanessa and Shimoli. Nice to see you all. Um, so I want to emphasize that this is based on the science of how people learn and how memory works. And so it is based on that research. These techniques work. The bummer is, and I'm going to be really straight with you, you've got to do them. And, and and there's the crux. And I really am not underestimating how big a deal that is and how big a hurdle that is. But I'm hoping that most of you at the end of year 12 and therefore are kind of looking ahead and kind of going, OK, let's get things in place for the end of year 13 so that we can nail those flipping exams. Um, <laughs> Jade is great, Megan. Yes, she is. Um, so here's the thing about how to revise. It has got to be efficient. And the crucial thing about that is that it has got to work, i.e. efficient. It's got to work and it has got to use the least amount of time because you guys do not have time to waste. You just, you know, you know how hard it is to handle doing three or four A-levels and the amount of content that that means. You just haven't got time to waste. So this is about it happening in the least amount of time. But please, can I burst the bubble that this means that it is not going to be easy, but it means that you are going to have to get your brains working incredibly hard so that they pack in as much information as they can in the least amount of time. Um, so here's Let's start at the beginning and let's just set the scene. What is the environment that what's the environment need to be like for revision to be even close to successful? So my first thing is, is just create a space. And I don't care if you're going to be sitting on your bed with a tray on your lap or whether you have your own home office. You know, I really don't care. But just create a space where you can work. Gather the kit that you need. And most of it is just pens, pencils and paper with possibly some um, revision cards or flashcards. We'll come to those later. If you really struggle with motivation, here is my little tip that I have brought up in a video um, before, is that you use, and here you don't spend a long time making it, but you make a quick poster that you stick above your office, yeah, stick above your desk, stick to the tray, whatever, that reminds you why on earth you are sitting down to work when it's sunny outside and it's the last thing you want to do. You know, imagine yourself at the place where you're hoping to be. And here, here's the important thing. 
at your next stage in a year or two's time, wherever it is. Now here, you know, imagine, just put into pictorial forms the things that you want to be doing, the places you want to be imagining yourself in and the activities that you want to be getting involved in. Set the scene, remind yourself of why you're doing it. Here's the other ruthless thing, we've got to cut distractions. You know, put your flipping mobile phone somewhere where you can't hear it, where the notifications are switched off. It's not a distraction. Try not to have millions of tabs open. You know, social media is a bit of a killer for brain focusing on the work that is in hand. Music, if you need it so that you can block out whatever is going on in the home, can I suggest that you listen to music that you are not interested in, that you don't love the lyrics to, that you don't love the music to, because you'll end up singing along and your brain will be distracted. This is really focused time. I used to laugh and say that you need to really cultivate a thorough indifference to classical music because classical music is potentially the best because it has no lyrics. And if you're not interested in it, it's just wallpaper. Um, <laughs> thank you very much, Gerald and Sukti. Really nice to um, know that you're there. And, and here's, here is the real key thing, that if your brain isn't tired at the end of 45, probably a maximum of an hour session, it's probably not working hard enough because this is going to be this is going to be brain strain time. And I'm really sorry that I can't make it easier in that respect. <laughs> Don't put me detox. No, I haven't, Tom. I'm intrigued. <laughs> OK, how to revise three essential steps. And these, again, are based on the science. You have got to understand the content. You have got to learn the content. That means getting it in your head and getting it to stay there. And as a, you know, real bonus, you need to be able to apply the content to exam questions. Now, as a teacher, I used to go through these three steps. I, I have updated my teaching for this video, but fundamentally, I used to go through these three steps. And then several months later, I would then talk to a student who was really struggling to, you know, kind of, I don't understand why I'm not doing well in exams, that kind of conversation. And I used to talk to them about what they did in their revision process. And they did all of the things that I suggested here. And they did all of the things that I suggested here. And they would skip from one to the other. And it took me to gently point out to them that they'd missed out a rather crucial step. And that is learning the content. And, you know, I think both of us felt like weeping, possibly, at the end of the conversation. And I can't overemphasize how important this is, but I've got some really, really good tips for it. So let's do understanding first. This is absolutely crucial. And ideally, so here's the ideal, particularly for any of you who are out there in video land, this is, and you're watching this with only a few months to go before your um, exams. Ideally, you do this as you go along. Can I just state immediately that if you haven't done this up until now, and I'll talk about this stuff in a second, if you haven't done it up until now, my rule is, my absolute rule is, don't look back, look forward. Don't beat yourself up for what you haven't done. Just kind of go, okay, do you know, that makes sense to me. I'm going to do it from now on. Um, so here the plan is, is that as you go through your notes to make sure that you have understood the processes and the concepts that are being learned, that you start making summary revision notes mind maps, if you like that kind of thing. Here is a mind map of how to make a mind map. If that floats your boat as a way of, of pictorially and in words, uh, summarizing content, then use it. 
Just put in how to mind map in Google and hit images and you'll come up with that. Posters, posters are kind of okay as long as they're kind of just large revision notes. Um, flashcards, I'm going to speak about those in a second. And clearly, if you're trying to just understand concepts and topics, then of course, use YouTube videos. Hey, even use mine if, if they're useful. But here's the thing, speed the flipping things up. Nobody needs to listen to me at original speed. Speed it up as fast as you can, except for the bits where you just need to stop and go back and then slow it right down. I never, ever watch a YouTube video at original speed. They drive me mad at how slow they are. And that's why I try and make a real conscious effort of keeping them short and concise. Anyway, so here's the thing about revision notes, mind maps, and posters. These are what you need to use when you are making them. Use diagrams because your brain doesn't always only, it doesn't only take in what is written, it takes in visual clues. A little bit like why I have told you or suggested the motivation poster in the previous slide. Use abbreviations. Don't write whole words. I'll give you some examples in a second. And certainly don't write whole sentences. Keep everything short, because even though I'm talking about understanding as you go along, and I'm going to talk about learning as you go along, let's face it, a few weeks before the flipping A-levels, everybody is going to be cramming. And the whole idea is, is that these notes are things that give you your information jumping off the page at you so that it literally takes seconds for you to quickly look at the information and not minutes to read the essays that you've written on the, you know, your revision notes, your mind maps or your posters. So this involves, if you're going to make a summary of something, it actually really makes you think it through. And this is a key principle of understanding and learning. Really thinking deeply about something, making connections with other parts of the syllabus, making connections, dare I say it, with other subjects that you're doing. All of these things are really, really helping you because your brain is processing information, it's making connections, and that is hardwiring hard the information into your brain in the first instance. So here's a little diagram I've made. Here's an example of one of my diagrams. Notice how not beautiful it is. Notice that I've used abbreviations. I haven't written all of the um, uh, labels on there because I know when I was making that, that this is enough to remind me of what I need to remember. And notice also that when I go back to look at this, it makes my brain think because I haven't written out all the labels. I've got to think about, oh, what do each of those mean? That's another little bit of revision in itself without your brain even realizing that you're doing it. Here's an example of me um, summarizing part of the cardiac cycle, atrial systole. Now, because I've really thought it through and I've understood the words, I know that systole means contraction. So I know I'm talking about contraction of the atrial walls. And all I've put here is atrial pressure is greater than ventricle pressure. Notice my use of abbreviations. Therefore, atrioventricular valve opens. I've got to the crux of the problem. I've understood what causes the atrial ventricular valve to open. I, from this, I could pad out a little bit in terms of answering the exam question because I've got the crux of the knowledge there and I could add in, oh, and therefore the blood flows down into the ventricle, you know, for example. And I could probably remember that the semilunar valve is closed, for example. So can you see this ruthless summary really makes your brain think for, and going back over these ruthless summaries, if they're in the form of revision notes, mind maps or posters, makes your brain think again. And this is all really valuable stuff. 
Here's an advantage of a revision card. Now, this is a GCSE revision card. It's, um, oh, and I'm sorry if you're on um, phones and can't see it. Well, let me, it's, it's a revision card for GCSE, the menstrual cycle. And this was a minor bit of genius because one of my students, as a result of thinking through the connections that exist between the hormones of the menstrual cycle, suddenly realized an absolute pattern, which could be summarized by writing the four um, hormones involved, FSH, O for estrogen, don't need to write the whole thing out, you'd remember it's estrogen, LH, and prog, prog for progesterone, and realizing that each one stimulated the production of the next one. And each one also inhibited the production of the one before. And we're realizing that pattern as a result of really thinking through what she was trying to revise enabled her to write this revision card summarizing how the hormones interacted with each other incredibly succinctly. In addition, she used abbreviations just to say which organ produces each hormone, pituitary ovary or the empty follicle or corpus luteum, and then just again using abbreviations, how, what each hormone does. Notice how this card makes the information jump out of you, jump out at you. You're not reading loads of information. It would take a matter of seconds to look at that before an exam be, so that you could get the information into your head if we're at the cramming stage. Oh, hello, hello, lots of you. Um, really lovely to see you. Um, so here's the key. These things, revision notes, mind maps, posters, make them attractive, but don't make them perfect. I used to work in a girls' school and this was the bane of my life. They also, they always wanted to go back over and redo ones um, rather than just recognizing that their method of making these would improve and evolve. Never go back always keep going forward. There's my message. And if you are at a stage where this is all too late for you to have done this, this is where CGP revision guides come in. I'm not being paid, but I do think CGP are really very good revision guides because in my experience, having taught many of the A-level syllabuses, they're actually very good at keep making their revision guides very specific to the syllabus. They tell you what you need to know. And now all you've got to do, now you've got the summary, she says all you've got to do is learn it. Here is the really crucial step. It's gonna be crucial at A-level. It's gonna be absolutely crucial at uni um, if that's where you're heading for. And this is the bit where the brain really needs to be working hard. Because this whole basis, the whole basis of learning content has got to be based on ruthless self-testing. You can't have your parents ask you questions. It, they're just simply not going to have the time. Ruthless self-testing is the order of the day. And these two methods, which are really common among students of rereading notes or copying out revision cards, I'm really sorry, are, are far too passive to make the information actually stick in your head. So this is what I'm going to advocate. Please don't do these. Let's look at some of these other methods instead. And it's all about self, um, sorry, selfish, ruthless self-testing. So here's the science, and this is genius. This is this is from Jade. This is what her her university. I'm going to um, write down this website. If I can, I'll try and make a link in the video. I don't know, you know, but this is what you need to look at. This teaches you the science 
and explains why and explains how absolutely step by step how to use this method of spaced repetition. This uses flashcards. So a flashcard to me is when you have a question or two on the front and you have an answer on the back. Um, small pieces of information that just have to be learned, lots of them inevitably. And this is about the science and the practice, really practical, totally practical, of how you manage to repeat your ruthless testing of your knowledge of facts in a way where the intervals between each test get longer and longer as you go along. Because initially, but because to get them in your long term memory, you can't just learn something once. You've got to go back to it and regurgitate the information again and again and again. And this method enables you personally to you to identify that sweet spot of the intervals that work for you. It is genius. I've always recommended doing repeated revision, but I'd never come across this method. Look at it, fantastic. Oh, and there are, and there are uh, apps on phones that, that help you do it. Really worth looking into. So that's the flashcard thing. In terms of how you use revision cards or mind maps, if, you, if, if this is what you like to use, this is where I talk about ruthless timed testing. So if you've made a revision card like the one that I gave an example of for the menstrual cycle, for that card crumbs, it's such a small amount of information on it. I'd kind of go, right, 30 seconds to write it out again. Give myself the title of the menstrual cycle, write everything else on that card, 30 seconds. The same with um, timed, sorry, excuse me, timed regurgitation of a mind map. Now that might be far more complex. So maybe give yourself five minutes if you've got a big mind map on a number of different topics. But notice the time is really, really tight. And that means that your brain is working incredibly hard to scroll the, and notice the word scroll, scroll the information down on any scrap of paper that is to hand, anything. And when I say scroll, I mean the writing only needs to be legible to you. You don't have to write in full words. You use every abbreviation you know. Um, and you are literally spewing the information onto the page to test yourself in a very short period of time. At the end of that time, and notice how efficient that is, if you give yourself a really short period of time to test yourself really hard, really efficient use of time, really making your brain work. But at the end of that time, you then use, and here's the key, a different colored pen to then have a look at your mind map or your original revision card and write in the bits. In fact, don't write them neatly. You don't need to scroll them, the bits that you forgot. Because I can nearly guarantee that the next time you test yourself, you're far more likely to remember the bits that you wrote in in the color, the bits that you missed the time before. And gradually over time, if you do that whole spaced repetition thing with timed regurgitation of revision cards and mind maps, you're going to start getting a whole load of information lodging into you know, from short term memory to medium term memory to long term memory. Yeah, uh, Tom, I, I completely agree. You don't have to use mind maps. You don't have to use revision cards or flashcards. What you are describing there, a condensed version, is basically what I would call a revision notes. I don't care whether you call them revision notes or revision cards. The absolute point is that it is a condensed, summarized version. But Please note my suggestion about using diagrams, abbreviations, bullet points, and having quite a lot of white space around them so that you can use them for cramming if it ever came to that. Um, I hope that helps. 
Um, yeah, I'm going to come to past papers in a minute. Please don't miss out this learning part. The the third step, the application, Tom, is, is applying the knowledge to exam questions. I completely get that doing exam questions helps you remember it, but it simply doesn't get enough of the syllabus into your long-term memory. And you need to be, I, I would really say that you need to be trying to get as much of the AS syllabus into your long-term memory as much as you can, dare I say it, before you even start year 13 in September. It will help you enormously when you're actually being taught your year 13 stuff because you'll have just have it in your head. You won't be having to think what the difference is between primary, secondary and tertiary structure, for example. You know, really massive, massive help. Um, I hope I hope that helps. Um, in terms of making revision notes, revision cards, mind maps, these strategies will also help. And I actually I'm going to change that to a will because all of these strategies that I'm about to talk about talk about making associations between the content that you're trying to get stuck in your head and something else. In other words, giving your brain hooks to help you recall it. So mnemonics, classic one for me, learning the taxa of the hierarchy of taxa. Um, kingdom, here my kingdom, phylum, uh, class, order, family, genus, species. And I, I hated learning it that way. But if I say keep pans clean or family gets sick, it's there. I'm only I'm I'm only thinking I'm literally re regurgitating that. And I've got the hierarchy of the taxa in my mind. Notice association between letters and crucial piece of information. Diagrams, I've talked about how important being able, if you can summarize information in a diagram rather than writing it out, always do it. It will jump off the page into your head far quicker. Um, Mind Palace, thank you, Sri Nathan. I hope I've got um, that right. Yes, I was ab literally about to talk about it in silly associations. Mind Palace, and I'm assuming we're thinking of the same things. Oh, thank you for that one. Kids prefer chips over fancy greens. I like that. I've heard far worse than that one. Um, that's a good one. And it's clean, which is clearly an added bonus. Um, silly associations. The, the way that I remember every single time, and this is year 13 content, sorry, that the beta cells in the pancreas produce insulin and not the alpha cells is that the B, beta is B, and then the first two letters of insulin spell bin. It's the only way, every single time I think about which type of cell produces insulin, I'm literally going in my head, oh, bin. Um, other silly associations, mind palace, making stories of a whole process so that you really vividly visualize walking through a house, walking through a garden where certain things that you see, um, you associate with certain parts of the process that you're trying to learn. I personally have never done these, but I've certainly heard them talked about. And it is another, a really vivid association of how to help you remember a, um, a, a process. Um, another silly association I was just about to say, and I've now forgotten it, so I might move on. Another silly association, and this is another one of... Thank you, Paige, for the, um, I just say PMAT for, for that one. But yes, absolutely. This is another one. This is another jade technique. I'll put a card in the actual video so that it can just be clicked on. And when Jade introduced this to me, I thought this was genius. Um, where you, you have an object that you are going to take with you into the exam because it is legitimately in your pencil case. 
and you assign part steps of the process to parts of that object. Watch the video because it is kind of mind palace, but on an object that you can actually take into the exam with you. It's almost like taking your revision notes into the exam. But notice that all of these are causing your brain to be working hard and making associations, which are really key. Um, I'm frustrated that I couldn't think of there's another silly association. Oh, yes. Another silly association is making up actions that describe a process to you. Clearly, you're not going to stand up in an exam hall and carry out an action, but you will absolutely be able to remember what you did in your bedroom when you were describing or explaining something to yourself from biology if it involves some kind of role play. An example of this is me on my video for explaining muscle contraction. I literally stand in front of the camera doing a role play that goes through the steps of muscle contraction, which are a flipping nightmare to learn. And I'm really hoping that that will help. It, it is how I remember it. And I'm hoping that it might help you. So anything that makes associations is going to help you. Um, Here's my favourite. This is what I did all the way through my teenage years. Um, clearly, I'm as mad as a hatter. Um, close the bedroom door for this one, because this involves you speaking out loud. Oh, yeah, it reminds me of something else about this. Teaching an imaginary friend, as you probably know, teaching is absolutely the most powerful way to get something that you want to learn into your head. And so, given that you're not going to be able to sit down either one of your brother's sisters or your mum or dad to help you with this, you're going to have to teach an imaginary friend. But here's the key. Speak out loud, quietly, but out loud. And this is for two reasons. Number one, if you do it in your head, your mind wanders. You've lost it. Number two, that when you run out of knowledge, you stop talking and therefore you know you've run out of knowledge. Also, really interestingly, and do not ask me how this works, but when you speak out loud, it triggers some way in which your brain works and it makes you realise often the bits that you don't understand. It just makes you ask questions far more than if you're thinking about it in your head. It's another alternative. Do you know the timed regurgitation that I talked about here? scrawling it down on paper, you could do it verbally. Again, speak it out loud. Don't try doing it silently in your head. I can guarantee you'll be asleep. Um, lovely. You, fa you face the wall and repeatedly talk the concepts and keywords. Love that, Gerald. Absolutely love it. it. Really, all of this stuff, it sounds stupid, but notice none of it is rocket science. And yet, it does work. It's it's make it's it's really processing information, thinking hard about something, and making associations. Those are absolutely key things to getting stuff, fixing it in your brain. Um, finally, I just want to remind you that um, you should mix up your subjects as you're revising. Do forty five minutes an hour for biology. Then go and do psychology or maths or chemistry or geography, whatever it is your other subjects are. Don't try and do five hours at a stretch because just switching subjects from in your brain just helps keep your brain just a little bit more refreshed. Also, really importantly, give yourself breaks. But dare I say it, here's a time when a phone is useful. Give yourself a timed break just to help you stay disciplined. If you're really trying to crack a load of revision, I'm afraid discipline is going to be kicking in here. I uh, Please let me just reiterate, look at this spaced repetition idea. Um, I, I do think that if you can make a habit of that, and that's where the discipline comes in, look at it. But if you manage to make a habit of it, I think this is possibly revolutionary. But we're talking long term here. Um, Okay. Oh, somebody, that's a brilliant technique. 
Lines, faults in knowledge. I found, oh, speak it, oh, life's list. Okay, lovely. I'm, I'm guessing you're thinking of um, teaching an imaginary friend. Probably worth just noting that I am speaking about 10 seconds before you guys are hearing it. Um, so I'm having, to, I'm having to guess a little bit of what some of the comments are. So here we are finally at applying the knowledge. And this is going to be a far from comprehensive. I am not going to be going through application questions here, but here am I just starting to talk about honing exam skills. And, you know, I'm going to be honest, the basic ones. But this is about deliberate practice. Don't just jump from doing your learning to doing exam questions in timed conditions. Uh, don't, don't, don't do it, all right? Because almost certainly you will have enough access to exam or enough questions to access to be able to do deliberate practice. And here's the analogy. Any sports person, any serious sports person will um, spend hours and hours on the training ground repeating particular moves and skills without time constraints, without pressure, but just keeping on practicing so that in the heat of a game, when the pressure is on, they deliver. And that's what the practice is there for. And the analogy is exactly the same, particularly with A-levels. Practice the skills taking note of each one that I'm about to talk about. Do it not under, do questions, not under time conditions, so that you are honing skills, particularly ones that you know you're not so good at, if any of these, you know, kind of ring bells with you. Because then it will be a habit when it comes to the exam, it will just happen because you'll have done it so many times and so deliberately. So reading the question, you know, this is, this is about, have you misread the command word? Have you read the question so quickly that you haven't taken in the command word and everything else that the question is asking you? Have you read, do you know what the command words mean? Um, have you read the question? This happens to me on A-level questions, can I tell you? Have you read the question and thought, I've actually got no idea how to start answering that? So what do I do? I go back and read the question again, but I am searching for clues to give me a hook into that answer. Because once I've got the hook and my headline answer, I can then, dare I say it, Pad it out. No, I don't mean pad it out, but add additional A level standard knowledge to give me the answer for a three mark question when my headline answer may have only given me one mark, for example. That's a really brief synopsis of how to gain marks. Right. Do you use A level terminology? If you don't use A level terminology, you will be hemorrhaging marks. Do you explain your answers in GCSE standard? or below um, uh, use of words. Really important that you nail that one. Using the words and using them accurately. Here's another thing. Is your English accurate enough to explain the science that you're trying to explain? Um, okay, um, yes, uh, Shimoli, um, how can I update my notes when I get a question wrong in the past paper and it uses better keywords? Do you know, I would just go back to your revision notes. Don't be precious about it. I'd allow you to use Tipex here if you wanted to. Literally, just either cross out neatly or Tipex and put in the keywords or use a different color pen, use a completely different color pen and put in the keywords. That's going to make them jump out and make you realize that that was something that you learned subsequent to doing the revision card. Don't go back over and remake those flipping revision cards. Don't you dare do that. Waste of time. Um, 
Application is so difficult. When do you know what keywords the examiners want? The application, right, keywords. If in a question you can work out what the, the bit of the A-level content is, the, the question is about, even if you're not sure about how to, look, here I'm being really honest, even if you're not sure about how to answer the question, do you know, that is where I would be giving it my best shot, but I would be chucking in every flipping keyword that I could think of. You know, if it's a flipping ex enzyme question, talk about tertiary structure, talk about shape of the active site, talk about enzyme substrate complexes, you know, talk about denaturation substrate no longer fitting, you know, if that's what you think the answer is using those kinds of terminology and phrases might well get you marks even though you haven't nailed every single mark in the answer hey pick up a few um would you say flash flashcards uh life list flashcards or mind maps are better um i i think Look at look at the thing about spaced repetition. If you think, if you like flashcards, the spaced repetition strategy um, from from Jade's link that I looked at a few minutes ago. Look at that. If you think that would work, I would I would absolutely give that a really good go. I, I would I would personally make the box. I had a quick look at the apps. It will make sense when you look at it. I, I, I personally would make the apps and use my individual flashcards um have a look mind maps some people absolutely love them they love the fact that they use color they use diagrams they're very visual and yet they're really summarized i i'm going to be honest i think it depends on what float your boat floats your boat personally i would try doing both not both for each topic but try doing one for one topic, one for another, and just seeing which one you feel is really making a difference. Um, accurate English, can I just say, if your teachers ever say to you, I know what you meant, but it's not what you said, you've got to take that seriously. Um, I always say make, make, uh, make sentences short, give, you know, try and only make one statement in each sentence, because the trouble is a lot of students write as they speak and their sentences end up being six lines long. Nearly impossible to follow. So, you know, just be aware, practice it. Learn from mark schemes, don't try and just learn them. Really dangerous to try and learn mark schemes because every flipping question is, um, is different and requires a different emphasis on the on the information that you learn but you can learn from them because it abs they absolutely tell you as um shimoli um mentioned absolutely tells you the terminology that they want to see phrases that are really good for explaining really complicated processes classic one being gas exchange in fish um the fact that counter current it, uh, counter current um, mechanism uh, causes a concentration gradient to be maintained across the whole length of the lamellae. Learn that phrase, you've got the marks. It's great. You don't spend six lines trying to write it in some other, you know, slightly more convoluted way. Especially common questions. Every exam board will have questions that they like to ask for example you know what does a control do um how do how does monoculture reduce the um the biodiversity of insects and for that second question it's always because there are less habitats and there are less sources of food less variety of food that kind of question, those questions come up so flipping often, it's not true. And if you notice them, write them down, write them down so that you, you know the answers. Um, 